Hey everyone, today we're going to be trying to figure out the reverse spinning basketball problem. So a few videos ago, I had somebody comment in the comments section and they had an interesting question. They said they were dribbling a basketball and they noticed the basketball was spinning in one direction and then it hit the ground and when it came back up from the ground, it was spinning the opposite direction. So they wanted to know how is that possible? Did they really see what they think they saw? If so, how does that conserve momentum? Well today we're going to be showing you all about the reverse spinning basketball, if it's possible and how does it work. Okay, well first of all, let's just see what actually happens if we spin a basketball one direction and dribble it, does it bounce off the ground and spin the other way? Well, let's see. Uh, not really, it just kept going the same direction. Huh. Well, that was a fun experiment. It didn't work. We'll see you next time. But wait, is there a reason it didn't work just now? Before we give up, let's try one more thing. Why don't we head outside on a little bit rougher concrete. Let's say we're playing outdoor basketball. Then let's see what it looks like. Okay, let's try it out. Three, two, one. Whoa, it worked. <laughs> Look at it, a reverse spin. So it completely reversed the direction it was spinning. Okay, so that was interesting. On this floor in here, it didn't work, but on my concrete outside, it did work. Now the only real difference between these is kind of the texture of it. So it looks like the ability for it to reverse spin has to do with the frictional force on the ball. Now originally when I answered this question off the bat, I said it should make sense that it reverses spin because if you think about it, when you're dribbling a ball, initially it's going downward, it hits the ground and then it comes back up. So it reverses its direction. So it would be pretty reasonable to believe that if it's spinning one direction and hits the ground, it will reverse that spin when it comes back up. And it looks like that is true, but only under certain conditions. And the conditions are that there has to be enough frictional force so that the ball can push on something and recoil and spin the other direction. Now, if it has to do with friction, we should be able to predict that if we use a ball that has a lower mass, then the angular momentum should be easier to reverse. So let's try it on this floor here where the basketball didn't work, but let's use a lighter ball and see if it actually reverses direction when we bounce it. So now the paper is going to act like a surface that doesn't have a lot of friction. So the paper is going to stick to the ball, but the paper won't stick to the counter. So we should be able to see if the ball imparts any angular momentum to the surface that it hits. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, so you can see that the ball definitely imparts angular momentum, which means that it takes away from its own angular momentum to spin the paper. And so basically by spinning the paper the same way, it slows down the ball. But what does it look like if I just hold on to the paper and don't let it spin? So now basically we're creating more friction for the ball to hit, and now it does have enough friction to recoil and go the opposite direction, hopefully. Yep, it spins the opposite direction. So there you have it. In order for this to work, you have to have a surface that can generate enough friction to oppose the angular momentum of the ball. And in that case, what's happening is the ball hits the surface and it twists. And because it's an elastic ball, it wants to untwist because it builds up a force in the elastic as it twists and it wants to untwist the opposite direction. This is the same reason why it bounces to begin with. 
Only in a bounce you're dealing with linear momentum, but in the spin you're dealing with angular momentum. But both of the effects are the same. If you have something that's springy or elastic, what happens is it wants to recoil the opposite direction that it hits something with. And so if you drop a ball down, it wants to go back up, and if it's spinning, it wants to hit and spin the opposite direction. But in order for it to spin the opposite direction, it has to have something to push off of. And so you have to have something that has enough frictional force that it can push off of it and go the opposite direction. So basically, you'll be able to see this effect with the basketball if you have a very sticky surface, like a really good basketball court. But if it's not happening very well on a basketball court, then you can try it on cement that has a really good frictional surface, like some textured concrete like you saw me do it on here. And I'd like to thank Blackview for sponsoring this video. Blackview has made a really cool indestructible phone. It's bend proof, crush proof, waterproof, dust proof, anything proof you want, this phone has it. It's really heavy duty. So if you have a rugged lifestyle and need a strong phone, check out Blackview. I'll put a link in my description where you can get this phone. So thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and remember to hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest video's out. And check out theactionlab.com to check out the Action Lab subscription boxes. We still have the vacuum chamber box available and our new box, which is the self-pouring liquid box, is now available. So head over there now and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.